Good morning, family. Prayer warriors. Awesome, awesome, awesome prayer warriors. I feel your prayers. I've had the first round of chemo. Hi, everybody. Uh, starting my second chemo round. And um, I am really tired. So, taking the medication for that. Uh, I had a bit of a cry earlier on today. and. Tell you when. Yeah. So one, two, three, hold your breath. Yep, that's quite deep. <laughs> Not too bad? Yeah. Tell me if it's sore. So there right. we go. Cranberry. Do you plan a good blood return? Jesus, that's really bloody. Yeah, sometimes it needs to be at least five mils. Oh, I've never seen that much blood. Because sometimes if it's not a good five mils, you might just see the side of the port. It's not properly ah. in for the tubing. So you need a good...
Tala for love, everybody, and welcome to Hello for Wholeness, Tala Noa, number five. Well, we've had a little bit of difficult technical difficulties, but we are really, really, really blessed tonight to have a, um, a beautiful soul come on and share her work in the area of bowel cancer. So she's in the green room. I'm just going to bring her on now. Are you there, my dear? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you loud and clear. How beautiful are you? Hey, so listen, before we begin, Talofa Lava, I'm just going to open up prayer. I'm going to open up in prayer and then I'm going to hand it over to you just to talk about who you are and mm -hmm. really what our Ngalwinga is tonight, eh? Okay. Let us yeah. pray. Father, we just want to thank you again for this opportunity to come and also just to really open up a, a platform where um, we can learn about what's happening in terms of health and well-being. I thank you for bringing Melanie on tonight. I thank you that... Um, her heart to help our community and, you know, the place that she's been called in, Father, will really be a blessing to others. So I pray that you be with us in our time together to Talanoa. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. So, so tonight we are all about talking um, around bowel cancer. And mm -hmm. so if you've just joined or if you're going to join later on, um, what people would have watched would have been my testimony around um, my experience with bowel cancer. And so that was about five years ago. And so mm -hmm. Aloha for Wholeness was born out of uh, my time going through bowel cancer, stage four, actually. Um, and so uh, this platform really comes about to provide awareness, which can lead into prevention uh, mm -hmm. that will save lives. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Melanie, mm -hmm. who's going to say who she is and what her role is. And um, yeah, I'll hand it over to you, my dear. All right. Um, um, I'm going to speak to you in the yeah, warm Pacific greetings. Uh, my name is Melanie Fruin. Um, my late mother, Agnes Fruin, hails from the beautiful islands of Samoa. I'm from villages of um, uh, my name, Ale Bata, and Tufi Opa in Apia Upolu. Mm. Um, she's also from the village of Ivan Savai as well. Uh, my late father, Frank Morris. Um, was a New Zealand um, European with ancestral links to Wales, Eng um, England, and Wales. Sorry, England, Wales, and Ireland. And um, I was born in Auckland, New Zealand, but I was raised in both here and Samoa. I am married. Um, I live in Mangri in South Auckland. And Ooh. yes, and with, with my 12 year old son, Levatu Ma. Mm. So that's me. Mm. Uh, who are you married to? Um, <laughs> okay, well, welcome, my dear. So, I know that um, in the last, you are Talanoa number five, actually. And oh, wow. I think I've, I've almost covered the whole body. I'm not sure, yeah. but I think tonight uh, we are mm. focusing on bowel cancer. So, mm. uh with a lot of the guests, they bring their expertise and mm. um, information. And so I've got your slideshow all ready to go, my mm. dear. Okay. And often if, if people want to ask questions, they either ask here or a lot of the times it happens after people watch okay. the show again. So I'm mm. going to flick up your PowerPoint to start mm. us off with. Let's have a look. And then I'll get you to, to talk oh, us yes, through yes. that. All right. Thank you, Roz. Um, so I am the I am one of the community coordinator for the bowel screening program here in County's Manukau. Mm -hmm. um, I've just started my new role in February this year, so I'm just yeah I'm still finding my way around the program. Uh, my main role as a community um, coordinator in the bowel screening program is to um, 
advise and support eligible participants, uh, mainly our Pacific and Maori um, groups about bowel screening and support participants along their journey as well in the bowel screening program. Um, our main um, objective um, for the bowel screening program is to try and weigh, uh, raise awareness of the bowel screening program for our eligible populations with our Maori and Pacifica people. Um, that's including people with disabilities as well. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and just to take part in the um, bowel screening program, and that's every two years. And the goal is to try and increase that participation rate uh, in the bowel yeah. screening program. And in long term can reduce, you know, um, the disease and bowel screening and deaths from bowel cancer. Yeah. So that's my role and what the objective and the goals are for the bowel screening program. Mm -hmm. um, it has been highlighted that a lot of people don't know what the bowel is, and I thought it's quite important to know um, what the bowel. Um, so the bowel is part of our digestive system. It joins the, the stomach um, to the anus um, to lower R, yeah. and it helps waste material called a bowel motion to leave the body R. Yeah. The bowel is made of the small um, bowel and the large bowel. The large bowel is also called the colon uh, or the large intestine. Um, that's another thing that people don't know that it's, it's actually called the large intestine as well. Uh. Mm -hmm. And the large bowel contains large amounts of bacteria which are quite good for your health mm -hmm. and may help to prevent cancer. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is what, this is the picture that was shown to me. Well, yeah. I it wasn't shown to me. I asked for the surgeon to draw it for me oh. because in, in um, those of people who are listening, who've gone through the doctors or go to the doctors often will sit there and listen and not mm -hmm. ask questions because they think they know everything, yeah. but they don't. So they don't. that's right. Mm. Drawing a picture people actually helps. Mm. Uh, and especially if, they're going to cut parts out of your body out. So my operation was they removed thirty percent of my bowel mm. because it was in the in the you know was in stage four. So let's go to your next slide. Ooh, okay. here we go. Yeah, what is bowel cancer? Ah, so the bowel cancer is called a colon or a rectal or we'll colorectal cancer. Um, bowel cancer usually starts when the cells in the body, you know, they begin to grow out of control. Um, those cells can turn into polyps, um, and some polyps may turn into cancer over a number of years. It takes a long time before the cancer grows, and it can spread to the other parts of the body as well, like the lungs and the liver. That's why it's so important that we have regular bowel screening um, of people who are not experiencing any symptoms because it does provide a opportunity to find and treat bowel cancer early at an early stage. Mm -hmm. um, and just with the polyps, um, the polyps are like growths on the inside lining, lining of the bowel. It happens when the cells in the, in the, in the bowel begin to grow out of control. Mm -hmm. In most cases, um, polyps don't cause any symptoms so you may not know that you have them, but it is possible that some polyps uh, may bleed, even though you may, you may not see it or see blood in your poo to lower up. And this is why you might need a, col uh, a colonoscopy down the line. Um, some of these polyps, they look like um, flat um, dome, um, or they look like, like a mushroom like a cauliflower arm um, size. So those are the polyps that you might find in your bowel if they do detect that in the bowel. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the um, common symptoms of bowel may include um, a change in your normal bowel habit that continues over several weeks or blood in your bowel motion. Um, if you have like um, abdominal pain. Um, while these symptoms are usually caused by other conditions, it's vital to get them checked by your doctor. Um, 
that's why early bowel cancer may not cause any symptoms or signs and bowel cancer screening programs can help to find them. Ah, that's why it's so important to check them. So uh, as you speak to the slides, mm. because I've gone through this, I can mm. comment on this. And so I did have signs. Mm. And some of those signs you will ignore because you think yeah. it's just yeah. nothing. Mm. But um, things like constipation, mm. bloating. And I just thought, oh, yeah, just eating too much, you know, mm. Mm. over A, over A. Yeah. Um, and so you don't do anything because you don't think it's, it's anything wrong. Mm. Mm. But it wasn't until... I had bleeding in my uh, bowel motion. Mm. Then I went to the doctors. I actually went into hospital. Yeah. And then um, they 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 didn't do anything. Mm. So they sent me home, mm. and that was in 2015. So you know, all I'm saying to people is, if in, you just keep asking. Yeah. And then a, a year later, I bled again, and then I was really bad, and then I had colonoscopy, and it was stage four bowel cancer. Mm. Yeah, don't ignore the signs. If you see any symptoms, just go and see your doctor. Mm. Um, so who is at most risk? So bowel cancer is more common in those over the age of 60. Um and it's more common in men than women. Um, or if you have any extensive bowel disease or have a family history of bowel cancer, um, you may have a higher risk of developing bowel cancer. Um, please talk to your doctor if you do have a family history of bowel cancer. That's what I always advise uh, my participants, is that if you do have that history, please go and see your doctor. So can you, I, I don't know whether you're going to touch on this, because mm -hmm. I was 51. Mm. So I wouldn't have qualified for a bowel screening because mm. it's so late. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're probably going to touch on this, but. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the bowel screening program is for the ages of 60 to 74. But if you feel like you do have those symptoms, or if you've had that fam, please consult your doctor. Don't wait for us to send you an invitation for the program or wait till you're 60 please yeah talk to your doctor about it don't wait just any symptoms mm. so what is the national bowel screening program so this is a free program to help detect bowel cancer um, we have um, 19 out of DHBs offering the screening right now. We still have one more um, DHB that will hop on board. That will be this year. That's Bay of Plenty. Um, it is offered to men and women between the age of 60 to 74 years of age who are eligible for publicly funded health care. And it's offered every two years. Um, evidence... Um, has shown that um, bowel screening programs has saved lives through early um, detection and when they have found it really early. Um, and it does involve doing a simple test called a FIT test. Um, this test is done at home. It's very easy and um, clean to do at home. Um, yeah, um, if you're not too sure if you are registered or eligible for the program, you can contact our um, 0800 phone number. That's there. That's 0800 924 or 432. So if you're not too sure, you can bring them and they'll let you know if you are eligible for the program. So okay, so the kit, oh, are you talking about the kit later? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So why, why regular bowel screening? Why is it so important? Um, so New Zealand has one of the highest rates of bowel cancer in the world. Um, bowel cancer is the second um, highest cause of cancer death in New Zealand. Um, currently more than 3,000 people are diagnosed with um, bowel cancer every year. Mm. More than 1,200 die from the, the disease 
And we're talking about 100 people a month, which is quite alarming. Um, people who are diagnosed early and who receive the, the treatment early, they would have a 95% chance of long-term survival. And that chance of long-term survival drops down to 10% if it is diagnosed late. This is why, this is exactly um, what the bowel screening program is aimed at, is mm. picking up this cancer at an early age stage and even prevent, preventing bowel cancer from developing in the first place. Mm. Mm. That's a, a hundred deaths every month. Yeah, I think, oh yeah, that's quite alarming, a hundred per month. Yeah. So they say it's the, is it the second highest killer in New Zealand? Second, yeah, lung the first and bowel second. Mm. And. Okay, so who should not do the bowel screening test? Um, so it is not um, fit for everyone. Um, you should not do the program if you have symptoms of bowel cancer, if you've had a colonoscopy within the last five years, or if you've had your large bowel removed, or if you are seeing a doctor about bowel um, problems. Um, and like I said before, if you have any of those symptoms that concern you, please go and see your doctor. So this is just an outline of um, um, the participant's journey. Um, so for a participant to uh, for a, for a participant for the pathway, that involves receiving the invitation and the mm. thick kit, and then doing the test. You can see as you go around the the um, the, the journey, um, sending the test pro for processing and the results and next steps if positive. If you get a negative um, result, it means no further investigation are required at the time. But if it is a positive result, um, it does not necessarily mean that you have bowel cancer, but it does mean that further investigation is required. Um, that could be a colonoscopy. So I, I'm still stuck on that age thing, and I know you're going to talk I know. about it. Yeah, I know um, you'll talk. I know you'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, the program is for sixty to seventy-four years of age. Um, I know the MOH. Um, uh, they're not ignoring it. They are looking at um, looking at the lowering the age down at some stage. They're just trying to um, go through all the screening of all the DHBs right now, and take it from there. And I know with um, the age as well, um, this was, yeah, New Zealand chose 60 because of the pilot program that they had with Wider Matter. They thought that 60 had more of, um, had more cases, it had like 82% of um, people that were 60 that were diagnosed with bowel cancer. Yeah. So that's all I could say about the age right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm still learning my way in the program. Um, yeah. So when I was talking about the table, so you get your, um, you're invited into the program and you get your fit, um, fit, um, fit test. So for first time participants, they get a pre-invitation letter and an information booklet about the bowel screening. So that's sent when they become eligible to join the program. Um, and then two weeks after the invitation, they will receive a fit kit um, pack with instructions and the consent form. Mm. And those who have particip participated before, um, like the second round or more, they would receive the, the fit kit pack and they do not need to get the pre-invitation -invita letter as they're already, yeah, they're already um, familiar with the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many languages is this done in? So at the moment, at the moment we um, we have Samoan, um, Tongan, uh, uh, Cook Island, and we've got it in Chinese and Hindi at the moment. Yeah, we are working at getting those um, resources done because I think it is really important to have those updated. I think it is a gap that we need to work on, is getting the right um, information out there for our participants. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think so, it's a big get. Yeah. Uh, so there's a free test kit. Yeah. Okay. So the free test kit, yeah, sorry, um, Rose, just oh. with the, I won't, um, so the, the free test kit does come in the mail. Yeah. Um, so it comes in a letter like this. It oh, comes yeah. with instructions, um, consent form that must be completed and returned. And yeah, and this returns into the post with the consent form. Okay. So it looks like this. A lot of people think it's a mail, but it's not. It's, yeah, it's your free um, test kit from the bow screening program. So I'll just get that, because I want to. I want people to see that. Hang on. Can yeah. you just hold that up? Oh, yeah. So it looks like this. Mm hmm Right. And that is sent out to... When they get invited in the program. Right. Yeah. So this is what it looks like, guys. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the next one, um, Ross, what one more left? Ross, are you still there? Okay, um, yeah, so we're going to the next slide um, while Ross works on our um, presentation. So completing the test. Um, so the free test is quick and clean and simple to do um, at home. The test kit comes with instructions on how to use it with a consent form. Um, please do the test as soon as possible. Um, it is important to return your um, test kit within six months of receiving it. The lab can't process tests which have passed the expiry date and it does um, last for six months. The, to do the test, you need to fill in the consent form. So I've got a consent form here. Um, you write the date that you do the test on the consent form. You peel off uh, the yellow barcode sticker that's on the consent form, and you stick this onto the flat side of the tube that I have right here, okay? Um, and then you can collect a, a small sample from your pet bell or poo using the dipstick here. And all we're needing is just a small sample, like a small grain of rice, okay? Okay, so all we're needing is just this size, size okay? And then you put it back into the tube, make sure that um, it is tight. And then you put the sample into the um, in, into the, this bag provided, along with the sign and completed consent form. 
and you post as soon as possible in the reply paid envelope pr provided. And please keep the sample in a cool place until you post it. It does not need to be kept in the fridge. And to prevent any um, postal delays, it's best not to send it on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Okay. So this is my bag that I've put in here with the consent form as well. Okay. And it's all ready to be posted or you can drop it off at the lab. Okay. So that's how we do our test. It's very easy and simple to do. Um, returning the test, uh, you can drop it off at, to the nearest um, lab or free postage to rural areas in the free post envelope that I was just showing before. And you need to make sure that they include the test kit in the um, zip lock bag with the label on the tube. Um, the conf with, along with the completed um, consent form and with the date of the test. Um, the sample should be kept in a cool place until posted. Like I said before, it doesn't need to be put in, in the fridge. And the test needs to be posted on that day, ideally on Monday to Thursday, to avoid any postal delay. Some of the kits are not processed and they become um, spoiled um, um, tests for three main reasons. And one of the reasons is that they haven't put the yellow barcode sticker or the date um, on test is not written on the form um, or the consent form hasn't been signed. So these are not um, so these are not able to be processed. Okay, so that's why it's so important that you have that yellow barcode sticker. Make sure that you sign your consent form, fill it, and make sure that the date is on the consent form when you do the test, okay? Um, just in reference to the results and the next steps, so results are normally received within three weeks of the program. If there is a negative test, um, the participant will receive a letter in the post and, in, and if eligible, will be sent another kit in two years' time. This will happen automatically. If there is a positive test, um, traces of blood in the bowel motion, um, the participant will be contacted by either their doctor or practice nurse or by um, a bowel screening nurse at the local hospital. Okay. Results might be given over the phone or sometimes participant might be asked to come in for an appointment. And like I said before, um, a positive test um, does not, that doesn't mean that you have bowel cancer. It means that you need further investigation that is required. Okay. And just um, some of the things that can help with, um, with bowel cancer and staying healthy. Here are some of the things that you can do to keep your bowel is by eating your, your veggies and healthy fats. That means no corned beef. Um, People who eat um, high fiber diets are less likely to develop um, bowel cancer. And um, please limit the amount of meat that you eat, um, especially processed uh, meats. Drink six to eight glasses of water a day and please get moving. Um, um, and you know exercise benefits your heart and can help you maintain your weight as well. It also may lower your risk of developing some types of cancer as well, and that's including colon cancer. And try and aim for 30 minutes of moderate um, exercise on most days of the week. Um, another one is to watch your weight, um, limit your alcohol, and try not to smoke. If you choose to drink alcohol, just do it moderately. That means no more than one drink a day for a woman and two drinks a day for men, okay? Um, I think um, Ross is still having um, some technical issues here. Okay, so here is um, some of the screening stories um, of some of the, um, of one of our participants that had bowel cancer. 
I one of them is one of Ross's story. I first saw and heard her story um, when it was broadcasted at a waiting area while seeing my doctor in uh, Mangri. I was very engaged um, during her story, and it led me to the following questions: like, why, you know, she's so young, um, and one that I, I wondered what the participation for our people were in our communities and I couldn't believe it happened to her you know it can happen to anyone um yeah so her story um, really captured me um before I um joined County Smanica so I actually saw her story before I um became a, a community co coordinator um yeah and I have to say um, that you have done an amazing job as well, um, Ros, with the Aloha Wholeness Initiative that you've started and the Talanoa podcast as well. I know this has definitely have given people hope and some collective um, strength as well um, to try and encourage, you know, what people are going through cancer um, and their treatment as well. And it's great to have these um, Talanoa sessions as well with how professional. I think it has helped, you know, some of our participants with their journey along with um, their treatment. Um, you, have, you have, I think you should have your own show. Um, no. <laughs> I'm still I was, learning. Like, I was in know. the background. I was in the background trying to jump back on. But uh, for some reason, and this has never happened before, for some reason, it's like the streaming just went on and off, on and off. But anywho, this is how you, uh, for those of us who grew up in the church, you just, it's called yeah. RFA, ready for anything. Yeah. Right? I totally if, agree with you there, Ros. If the host, if the host is gone, yeah, fei la yalo sha. You know, sha. you did really well. So, you know, I'm, I'm listening to what Melanie is saying. And up there is a picture of me and my sister. Thank you for what you yeah. said. Um, yeah. So just a little bit of background to that, and people can watch this as we share the link. The, a little mm. bit of background to that is, so I was diagnosed um, in 2017. Mm. In my diagnosis, I then got all my siblings to get checked. Mm. And there are nine of us. Um, there are eight of us now because my younger brother passed about two years ago now but um everyone got checked and so i said to all of them you all need to go get a colonoscopy mm -hmm. and um when you are diagnosed with um cancer it's life-changing it, it, it just you know can totally destroy everything yeah. but um that was five years ago for me mm -hmm. um everything that you've shared I personally have experienced so in and I was not 60 mm -hmm. so I was yep. 50 51 yeah. when I was diagnosed my younger sister was 51 50 mm -hmm. for, she would have been 48 47 mm -hmm. so Olivia was diagnosed uh, and they caught it early mm -hmm. they caught it really early so she did go through surgery colorectal surgery um, and because they caught it early, uh, she didn't have to do chemo. So mm. I I had to do chemo. And um, I think like, you know, and I'll just keep moving the slides along as, as you mm. go through this. Um, you know, this is, it's so important. And we'll talk a little bit more as you, if you want to speak mm. to that um, slide there. Mm. Now, yeah, but I, I actually, when I saw your story, so I, like I said, I saw your story at my doctor's, and like you said, that was like, I think it was like um, three years or four years ago. So that really captured me. And I honestly believe, Roz, I think that um, God kind of like led me to you. Yeah. I saw that story, and I, yeah, I honestly do believe that. Um, and when I started my role, this year i actually came across your story as well and i just had to try and reach out to you mm -hmm. um and you know we've we've had like um some walker fonts with church as well so we've been trying to promote that through our walker fonts at church 
and I met with you and I haven't seen you like for years. And I honest, honestly said to like Lama, I said, I actually think that God has connected me with Ross Ross because I haven't seen her for years. You know, I saw mm. her story, I saw it at work, and I just felt like I had to connect with you. And when I did, you had your Talanoa session that was just starting up as well. And I remember I you mean, saying, I... you just rang at the right time. I'm starting this Talanoa session. And yeah, yeah, so I think my faith, yeah, um, yeah, God led me to you. Um, for your journey and yeah so I'm getting goosebumps right now because yeah, um, <laughs> and it's well funny you know, I met you for the walk -a I saw you at the walk -a you know um, on that Saturday and I thought oh my god um, yeah I'm, I'm meant to do this you know I'm meant to help this person and yeah so yeah um, so this slide here um, this last slide here, I wanted to dedicate this Talanoa and presentation to my cousin Olga oh. that passed away from colorectal cancer last year. Yeah. Um, we weren't able to send her off in a way that she should have deserved last year because of um, COVID and the borders were closed and, you know, it was locked down. But, um, we had some amazing people that, that were, you know, that were able to be with her at the end. Mm. Um, Liz and Luana, sorry, just to name a few people there. Mm. Um, Sal. Yeah. 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 And, you know, for Sal as well. Um, yeah, I was quite shocked. You know, she's, she's young. She was always healthy. And you just don't know, you know. Um, yeah, bowel cancer, you don't have to have symptoms, it can just happen to anyone. So, yeah, I thought I might just dedicate that to Olga. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll never forget Olga, her huge smile and her big faith as well. She has touched many people's lives, and her legacy, her legacy will carry on. Um, yeah. Well, I think I, th I think like you know, look, I I didn't know you had that picture. It makes me want to cry when I look at that picture. Sorry, yeah. She was. Um... I wasn't too sure because I know it was a personal thing, but <laughs> I felt in my heart that I should have had it because yeah, we didn't celebrate her her day last year. We couldn't go, so I thought I might yeah. Well, that's your that's a you know, I've, Olga's sitting with the Lord right now, going, yeah. "Yay, come on, Melanie." Tell yeah. my story, right? Yeah. Hey, um, tell my hey. story and help yeah. promote the awareness around bowel cancer. I know that's what Olga will be saying. Yeah, yeah. And so you know, uh, as we come to, um, we look at this and we understand the the, the big work that you're currently undertaking. Mm. The probably the one of the there's a couple of things. Okay, so the age. I'll yeah. go back to it. When people see it, they don't think, oh, you're a mighty kaka makua. Yeah. You do. like. But it's not. Um, and you touched on some of the slides around the way uh, uh, around nutrition. So mm -hmm. in the last couple of Talanoas, the factors that are impacting particularly Pacifica Māori is around nutrition, nutrition, um, the obesity rates, okay, mm -hmm. um, movement, the mm -hmm. lack of movement thereof, mm -hmm. um, and I think you uh, around the lack of information or yeah. understanding of the information. Yeah. So 2017, I get diagnosed actually the end of 2016 as mm. a 51 year old mm. um and i and i shared earlier on around the symptoms that i didn't even think because it's a silent killer mm. yeah and by, by the time you find out it sometimes it is too late mm. um and so the part of the body is the other thing which culturally yeah uh it's not an easy thing Particularly for you, young a young woman, mm. to address culturally, right? Mm. Uh, and 
no one wants to talk about that part mm. the butt right mm. no one wants to talk about it because it smells and it's mm. embarrassing and mm. nobody wants to consider anything around um that area because mm. it's that area and so uh it, it gets overlooked yet it's the second highest killer mm. Uh, 1200 a year 1200 a year second highest killer you know the bowel screening I I also think too it is an age thing because if you did have it lower you don't have enough you don't have enough um, places to get colonoscopies you you you, you would be inundated yeah yeah you would be inundated with with um, people wanting a colonoscopy Mm. so I did my 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 part around telling my family i asked my mom is there anyone mm. had passed away of anything around the stomach and her, her brother did so yeah. uh but around bowel cancer um the the awareness wasn't there mm. yeah. so so i mentioned this to some of the clinicians come on the same factors contributing factors to any of these diseases Mm. nutrition lack of information Mm. exercise uh and and then covid comes Mm. yeah okay and then all of a sudden there's vaccines there's Mm. boosters there's drives to covid drives and that's how i understand Mm. all Mm. that and I and I think I had mentioned to people that have come on here. I said, why don't you use the same system? Why don't you use mm. the same drive mm. to tackle these diseases um, mm. and how we can do that? Because you're one voice, yeah, right. And so I just think, you know, Melanie, um, you know, what the enemy would would put in my my pathway to knock me out, take me out. The Lord, I know for me personally. I'm turning it around mm. um, to be an advocate. Uh, mm. And so with a law for wholeness, the, the main focus is to say to people, you are not alone. You mm. are not alone. Don't mm. ever feel that you're alone. There are um, supports for us, for all people. Mm. Uh, and, but, and in particular for cancer, because cancer is the one disease that is, you know, so, mm. And so last week I had the con- cancer control agency on awesome. and and seeing the machine that it is um, mm. uh, and the inequity yeah. <laughs> that there is, right? Mm-hmm. And of that 1,200 that die, I mean, every life is valuable. Mm. Every life is valuable. How many of those lives, uh, Pasifika and Māori, how many could have been saved, yeah. right? You know, yeah. um, I'm, I'm I'm part of Bowel Cancer Support Fano on Facebook, and yeah. so many poor, you know, your heart goes out yeah. to the families because some of the the medication is unfunded, mm. so poor people have to mortgage their houses, and mm. you know, and I, what mm. when is that going to change? And and so, mate, you can't answer this. I'm just mm just offloading I guess but I I think like the age thing really gets me yeah. it really gets me um you know I'm I'm not sure how that sits because for Pacifica it it's getting people uh, at, uh younger mm-hmm. and, and Absolutely. you know so mm-hmm. We, I know it says 60 to 74, and I know you're going mm-hmm. to be, that's what you're aiming at, and we're sending out all these things to old people, mm-hmm. and you're doing talks to old people. Yeah. But really, if we want to do prevention, yeah. it needs to be right across the board. board yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I totally agree with you there, um, Rose. I think it is a big gap um, with the age thing. Um yeah, like I said, and from what I'm, um, from what I know, I know that MOH hasn't ignored it, um, 
but I'm hoping down the line that maybe they will do something up because I know a lot of my family members and friends that have passed away, even in the 40s, not not 50, but 40s. Yeah. So I think it is yeah, a big gap um, that we need to address. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we have a, um event in June. Um, it is addressing um, equity. It's our um, Pacific Network um, thing. So it will it will be a network where we can try and address those um, issues. And my for yeah, it's out of gun and war, but we don't do anything about it. So I'm hoping that down the line that they will. Um, yeah, it's it's really really hard. Like you want to do something, but you need to get the right people in place to do that. Um, yeah, I think I think I think. Well, I know for real. I'm I'm a commute. I'm from the community. Mm. I'm not funded by, you know. Mm. This is a response. My whole all of wholeness is a faith response. My church mm. is a partners with me in this. Yeah. And and the aunties group, which I belong to, also mm. have partnered and they've also helped with raising funds and awareness. Yeah. So then which then leads us to our project that we're gonna be yeah, releasing in the next <laughs> which um you know, around uh move your butt which mm. I will be post I'll be setting that up pretty soon. So moving uh thirty for thirty, it's taken mm. from the ESPN, and your husband know this because he watches sports and things, but 30 for 30, moving 30 days for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then on the 25th of June, which, you know, and won't be 30, but on that particular day, we sort of considering how we're going to roll this out, but mm -hmm. that's the day when everybody gets out there and moves mm -hmm. something. So, you know, we want to get, get as many people on board yeah. there. And it is going to be raising fund, raising awareness for prevention, and then raising funds for um, bowel cancer research. Yeah, I I'm think looking that's... forward to that, um, Ross. By the way, <laughs> yeah, you and I got to meet to talk about that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I mean, look, um, it's nearly eight o'clock. We've we've mm. done pretty well. You've done very well. Mm. Um, I'm just going to find your best there. Okay, and then I'm going to get that ready for us. But, you know, is there, are there any, anything else that you want to say to people? Um, yep. Um, this is a really easy test to do. And we ask you to talk to your parents, your grandparents about completing this free test. Um, it will save lives. And in the end, we want you um, to be around your elders to see your grandkids grow up more and, sp and spend time with them and with their family. And if you have any questions or if you don't have a kit, please ring the 0800 number. Mm -hmm. 0800 9, sorry, you can't see 924 432 to do your test. Or if you have one lying around, please do it. Um, or ring that number to order one because it does expire in six months. So please, please do your test. Okay. It's so, sorry, Mel, Mel. So yeah. you're saying it you're saying this to the sixty year olds, right? Yes, yeah, sixty and um the fifties and the forties for all okay. Ages. Yeah, definitely. Okay, good. I just yeah. want to make that if if you get a pack in there and mm. you feel the symptoms are pretty close to it, so they yeah. can do the test and send it in? No, you have to no. consult your doctor. You have consult to your to doctor. doctor, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you have any of those symptoms, yeah, please see your doctor. Um, yeah, we're hoping, we pray that the age will lower as soon as possible. So it is for everyone, not just 60 to 74 years of age. Mm. Um, but yeah, but please see your doctor if there are any symptoms. Uh, um, I, think, I think the data has to reflect. Yeah. If, um, I mean, you're part of the bowel cancer screening. The data needs to reflect uh the mortality rate of mm. the ages yeah because that's going to be way more more um scream louder at the powers yeah. that be uh than us doing all sorts of things i think that's going to have to be it but like i said there's so many i mean every part of the body has got mm. a cancer society mm. behind it mm. or mm. organization behind it yeah. right and so we know uh, June is bowel cancer month, 
that's yes. why we are doing Move Your Butt 30 for 30. Um, and so, you know, I want to say thank you to Melanie for joining us tonight. I know that um, you've been called to for such a time as this to promote and to bring awareness um, to our people, all people really, eh? Yeah, absolutely for all people. Mm. If, in, if in doubt, you must check it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awareness and prevention saves lives. Mm. So, uh, we're going to end off with your song that you've chosen. And could you just um, tell us why you chose that song while I get the song ready? Okay. This is my son's favorite song, by the way. And it's my favorite <laughs> song. There's no reason behind it. Yeah. But it's our song. Me That's and beautiful. That's beautiful. I think like, um, you know, as we go out, we're going to go out to the song um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. There is a, a, rainbow. a rainbow, but there is a light. There is an answer. Uh, and we hope that as you, you know, walk out um, the month of May, take on board the Talanoa uh, and consider choices that you make um, that could lead to health and wealth and, and well-being. So I just pray blessing over you, my dear, as you walk out into this role that you have taken on board. Uh, everything that you put your hand to is going to, you know, increase and bring favour. We know that... Um, you know, in the area of health, it's a huge call. So, you know, we want to support you. And I'm looking forward to us working together uh, around moving the butt <laughs> and moving all those butts. Um, and that, yeah, we can fly as it says in the dream that you dreamed of really does come true. <laughs> all right. God bless you. We're going to sing out. And so we, we just lock out here, my dear. Uh, everybody else will catch you next Wednesday and those people who are going to watch this later on on the replay you know, if in doubt, check it out God bless you my dear Oh